339 for, 151 against. After the House of Commons in Britain, the French National Assembly voting a non-binding resolution that recognizes a Palestinian state. Even though the measure originated within his own socialist party, the foreign minister arguing that recognizing a Palestinian state, as Sweden has done recently, only makes sense in the context of a broader peace deal. However, there's no deal in sight. There's not even talks. Instead, since the last round of U.S. brokered negotiations collapsed in June, there's been, what, another war in Gaza, and increased attacks by extremists on both sides that have raised the specter of a third intifada. Will the outside world's pressure help break the impasse? By the way, that polarization also happening within Israel, where in the past hours, the Likud-led uh, coalition government has fallen apart. Snap elections are to follow. At the heart of the infighting within the cabinet, the role of religion with Prime Minister Netanyahu looking to officially brand Israel as a Jewish state. Is a snap election a good or bad omen for peace? And how will the international pressure come to bear on what seems like an untenable situation for most? Today in the France Van Get debate, we're looking at isolated Israel. And with us, he's a, uh, joining us shortly will be French Member of Parliament Jacques Millard from the same UMP party, but on opposite sides of this argument, Benjamin Haddad, who... Uh, also as a researcher for the conservative Hudson Institute think tank. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Also joining us uh, from Tel Aviv, Jerusalem Post columnist Daniel Tauber, who's also a member of Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, Likud party. Thank you for joining our conversation. And uh, attorney John Whitbeck, former advisor to uh, the Palestinian negotiations uh, with Palestinian negotiators uh, with, with Israel. Thank you for, for joining us. Happy to be here. The France Van Get debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter, our hashtag F24 debate. Yes, the uh, vote coming in uh, just a few hours ago in the French uh, National Assembly, um, the uh, uh, arguments heated at times in this, the nation that is home to uh, Western Europe's largest Muslim and Jewish population. Palestinians have just as much right as Israelis to be independent, to have their own state. There will be no solution until everyone understands this. Yes, to a Palestinian state, but we will never jeopardize the security of Israel. This is a non-negotiable condition. Uh, let me begin uh, uh, with you, John Whitbeck. A good day? Yes, I think a very good day. Um, personally, I find the, the uh, snap election in Israel even more cause for excitement than the uh, slightly more than two to one vote in the French National Assembly. And I think the timing could not be better at a moment when France and Europe in general seem to be getting their act together and trying to do something genuinely constructive uh, to produce peace, notably through the international conference that France announced last week, because there's the opportunity to shape an Israeli election in March around those who would support participating in an international conference with clear parameters, consistent with international law, clear deadlines, and those who wouldn't. And I think to the extent that that can be made, and I think Europe could do it, a major determining issue in the Israeli elections, it could be incredibly constructive, whatever the result of the elections. On this very set, John Whitbeck, at several occasions, you've uh, argued in favor of Europe acting uh, as a mediator uh, for uh, peace negotiations. We'll pick up on that point. First of all, let's say hello to Jacques Millard, uh, a <laughs> French member of parliament. Uh, how, how did you vote today? I voted in favor of uh, reconnection of Palestine because, in fact, you know, uh, that's 136 uh, states who are, which already recognized Palestine. Secondly, I was always in favor of Palestine state because when you upheld, you know, at the level of international law, people, a nation like the Palestine, it also gives them obligation to fulfill. And uh, for years and years, I've been in favor. I regret that France did not do it before. Um, you know, that's President Sarkozy who um, gave his green light 
to enter the uh, state of Palestine as observer in the United Nations and states uh, to UNESCO. I think it, we are just in the logic. And I think that it's a give, you know, I, I have a motto, I would say that uh, peace in the Near East should work on two legs, and two legs are two states. It doesn't mean that everything is solved, because I know that, uh, you know, we are in a crisis in which uh, the radicals of both sides have taken hostage uh, the entire system, and we have to break through. Uh, that will take time. Um, I, I know that uh, many of my colleagues say uh, that we should recognize Palestine at the hand of a peace process. Okay, the point is that it doesn't work for 40 years. Now, if we reverse the arguments, maybe we have a chance to make things move. It doesn't mean we have won, but it will take time, and I think it's a good uh, boost uh, to say to the entire uh, you know, uh, international community that we should go ahead. Um, do you agree with that, Benjamin Adan? No, I, I disagree. I think we all share the objective of peace with a two-state solution. Um, the question is, what kind of concrete impact can we have and can this resolution have? Or is it only just a symbolic feel-good resolution? Um, my sense is that this resolution, the vote of this resolution, does not help peace, which should be the first objective, and it does not further French national interest in, in the region or French diplomacy. It does not help peace because it will not strengthen the moderates in Israel. It will only give the impression that Europe once again is, send, is siding against Israel. And if you think that it will have an impact on the Israeli election, first I doubt it, but I, I think it's not going to be a positive impact. But also I think it will not uh, help and support the Palestinians were in favor of the negotiations because this is vindicating the Palestinian strategy that has been against negotiations uh, over the last uh, few years. And if you look at the, the text of this resolution, I think it is uh, very unbalanced and very one-sided. Uh, let me take an example. It states that it is in favor of uh, the 67 borders and the division of Jerusalem, which is more or less what is asked from the Israeli side, withdrawal from the occupied territories. It doesn't say anything about Hamas. It doesn't say anything about the right of refugees to return, which is still one of the greatest Palestinian claim, and I'm not talking about a, a claim by Hamas, I'm talking about a claim by the current Palestinian Authority. Uh, for the comedy aspect of it, it says that it's in favor of the dem democratic state of Palestine, but it's all but democratic today. You have Hamas on the one side, which is recognized by the European Union as a terrorist organization, and you have uh, Mahmoud Abbas, Palestinian Authority, Abbas has been in power for 10 years, and he was supposed to go for elections, I think, six years ago. So it's, it's also disconnected from the reality on the ground. And let me say something else about, I think, French national interest. You know, I think there are two things that should be asked. Does it further the cause of peace, or does it further French national interest? And I think France's strength, diplomatic strength, has always been to be seen as a balanced partner, uh, a friend of the Israelis with very strong uh, trade ties, for example, with Israel, and very strong security ties, but also the first state with Mitterrand that came out with this vision that we should recognize a Palestinian state, that it should be the end game of a negotiation process. So you're saying that basically when the foreign minister uh, last Friday offered France's services to broker, uh, to get Europe as a broker, that this is undermined by this recognition, uh, this, this symbolic resolution? Yes, I, I do not think it strains France's diplomatic hand in this, in this process. I, uh, I think there's lots of things that uh, uh, we could do uh, to bring our uh, partners in, uh, in the Gulf, in the Middle East, to uh, uh, support the, the Palestinian side to go to the uh, negotiation table. I think we, can, we should keep strong relations with Israel, also for other reasons, whether trade reasons, also security issues on which France and, and Israel have a strong security relationship, Iran, the development of the Iranian nuclear uh, program, the situation in Syria. On these issues, France and Israel have, uh, have uh, strong common interests. Check me out. Of course we have common interests. We all have common interests in peace in the Near East. First of all, we don't recognize governments. We recognize states. And that's a main point. I agree with you that uh, on, on the Arabic, on the Palestinian side, you have a couple of terrorists. I agree fully of that. But we have to go beyond that. We have to force things and to bring them all around uh, peace. You know, you pref you know the, the drama 
in this region is that you are always the terrorists of the other one. You see what I mean? So that everyone is accusing the others of to being a terrorist. We have to break this, otherwise we will have war for years and years and nobody will uh, gain uh, at the end and it will be for Israel really a big problem. So what I believe, I don't say you agree with you that this uh, um, um, you know, uh, resolution could have been better uh, drafted. I agree with that, and we reproach uh, uh, the Socialist Party that they should have normally involved everyone in that. And there are many uh, French MPs who said if we had that all together, drafted all together, then we would have voted it. I agree that it could be more in balance, but it doesn't really matter. We, we give a message, a message which is we have to recognize the people of Palestine as a nation, as a state, they need a state, because that gives them, you know, it brings them to the international level and that gives them a kind of dignity and also obligation. That means you have to clean up the house, you know, and that's very important. It doesn't mean, dear friend, that we have uh, achieved it. It will take more time, but it gives a clear message to all parties. Now we are fed up with this war. I, I, I say we are fed up with this war and we should bring everyone and the international community will say now you have to find an agreement. If we don't press hard, I agree with the, that uh, it's sometimes difficult to press hard on the Israelis. I agree with that. But they have to face reality. And there, I know a lot of uh, Israelis, a lot and of French whose religion is uh, uh, Israel, you know, they believe that they, we should go ahead, you know. So I think that we so have to bring emotion down and to say now be rational and try to find a solution. All right, a reaction on Facebook, Abdul saying um, it's not far enough, though it's a good move to begin with. The fact is that Palestinians need much more than a non-binding resolution on Palestinian uh, statehood. Let's say hello to uh, Daniel Tauber now who joins us uh, from Tel Aviv, Daniel Tauber, columnist at the Jerusalem Post, member of the of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, uh, Likud party. Thank you for being with, with us. Uh, first of all, I know uh, with all the news, and we'll be talking about it in part two of our discussion out of Israel today, um, is this just a, a, a side issue or is this a big deal, the, this uh, resolution that was voted in the French parliament? Well, well, I can tell you uh, for sure that nobody here is uh, setting a date on their calendar for the two-year deadline that the French uh, government set for when it would recognize a Palestinian state, regardless uh, of whether there's a peace agreement. Uh, most Israelis are not, are not thinking about uh, what France thinks or, or what Europe thinks. Um, uh, we're trying to live our daily lives, and uh, sometimes, when it's bad, uh, also not to get killed. Uh, the, uh, uh, the fact that the French have... Uh have uh, voted this resolution, that the British have now voted a resolution, that the European Union is to consider such a resolution uh, in uh, the coming uh, weeks. Uh, is that giving food for thought to Israelis? Um, I, I don't think so. You know, there was a time uh, when the Palestinians brought a resolution to the United Nations that there were some in Israel who said there was going to be a diplomatic tsunami and people got very afraid, and then there wasn't a diplomatic tsunami. Um, uh, people here are, are not so fearful of what Europe can do, and, and it's very ironic because um, I heard uh, uh, the first uh, the, the person uh, talking before me had mentioned that you know we need to ram something through, we need to say enough is enough. But as much as you, as much as uh, Europe and uh, France and Britain and Spain believe that they can force a solution here, uh, they can't because uh, as you know, as small as we are. Uh, we hold all the cards. Uh, we will say when there's a, a Palestinian state and when there's not. And the more you push us and the more you say, well, we don't care uh, what Hamas is doing. We don't care if there's an Islamic state in Gaza or if, uh, if Palestinians are, uh, or certain Palestinians uh, at least, are, are murdering babies uh, while, they're, while their parents are putting them on the train or, uh, go, or going into synagogues and, and killing people, uh, we're still going to say to, uh, to the Palestinian uh, Authority, which is run by uh, terrorists, and we're just going to say to Hamas, if you're going to keep doing this, it's okay. We're going to give you, we're going to still uh, going to so, encourage you. So what you are you suggesting? And, uh, that the, pressure the, Israel, it's going to be fine. Da uh, Daniel Tauber, over the years, public opinion is growing mm -hmm. more and more against Israel. Are you saying that the rest of the world uh, just doesn't understand? 
F first, uh, uh, at some level, many people don't understand. I think that uh, that there is an obsession with Israel that that also can't be explained only by ignorance. I think there are many uh, domestic and geostrategic uh, interests that are driving uh, this pressure on Israel. But but in, in terms of your last question, in terms of are, are people in Israel thinking about this? Are people in Israel worried about this? I think uh, the more you press us on this while there's terrorism against Israel, while there's incitement again, uh, to kill Israelis, uh, Israelis look at that and they say, well, you know, we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. If we withdraw from Gaza and we get rockets, the Europeans are not going to stand with us. If, uh, if Palestinians are uh, calling for people to run over Jews uh, or to use their kitchen knives to, to kill people in the streets, Europe's still not going to stand with us no matter what we do, whether we do withdrawals, whether we tell Jews they can't, uh, they can't pray or, or even enter the Temple Mount. Uh, so, you know, we, we right, just... So is, is uh, Israel's you know, resolute... There's not much we can do to placate you, so... John, John Whitbeck. I don't know what we can do, really. Um, getting back to today's resolution and the other European resolutions, um, to try to put this in a positive frame, um, I think most people realize the reason the so-called peace process has been a mirage for 20 years is that the status quo has always seemed to all Israeli governments and most Israeli peoples to be the best of all possible worlds. There's no incentive for change. There never has been. So, and there are, only I, two, just, there, are only two, there are only two ways to change the Israeli sense of contentment with the status quo. One is to have friends of Israel give it, in a sort of tough love, love scenario, firm, persistent pressure political, diplomatic, what, psychological, and economic, if I can finish, to so change, you, to realize that peace mm -hmm. is really in their interests and they should negotiate with an intention to achieve peace, not just to kill time as they have in the past. The other is violence from the enemies of Israel. I strongly favor the first approach for any number of reasons, including the belief it's more likely to be effective. All right, we'll pick up on that point when we come back. We have to take a quick break. Uh, you're watching the France 24 debate.